The United Kingdom's political culture has a few distinguishing characteristics. The first one is tradition. Um, they have a political history that has followed enduring political customs. So, um, I mean, starting in 1215 with the Magna Carta, then going on to the fact that they had a House of Lords, they established a House of Lords, then they had the English Petition Right, the English Bill of Rights. So they have a long and proud tradition of limited government and rule of law. Uh, gradualism, that kind of goes along with the tradition, is this idea that there hasn't been a violent revolution, that there's been slow reforms throughout the history of the UK where the king has agreed to give up a little bit of power to the parliament slowly but surely to the point where we don't even have, you know, the UK doesn't have a absolute monarch anymore. They have a constitutional monarchy, even though they don't have a formal written constitution. And that goes on to the next one, constitutionalism. Um, there's rule of law and limits put on the power of the government, and especially of the monarch. Um, they have a tradition of self-rule. Um, since it is an island nation that has been able to be isolated from the rest of Europe, they do have a strong sense of sovereignty or independence, Like, and that's what's led to the Brexit vote or part of the Brexit vote. They didn't, didn't want the European Union, Union to really dictate what they could and could not do as far as um, admitting immigrants um, or you know what to do with free trade and then there's this idea of consensus um, it unifies the people to work toward the common good of the country uh, so even if you are wealthy like you are a duke or a lord you are willing to contribute or give over to um, the people who are less fortunate than you and it's actually considered an obligation or noblesse oblige. Um, it's an obligation of the nobility to take care of the common people, and that's why you see that the UK had a, a welfare state after World War II and the Great Depression. It's the idea of collective consensus. Everybody collects, everybody agrees, and then everybody distributes what they collected to everybody else who maybe isn't as fortunate as they are. Uh, so, so Social cleavages. Now you can imagine most people consider consider themselves the member of the nation in which they live. So Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, England, you know, people consider themselves English, Scottish, Welsh, um, or Irish, Northern Irish. And that's why there has been a devolution of power from London, from Parliament, to the uh, local governments of the different um, nations that make up the United Kingdom. Um, Scotland has a sh very strong national identity, um, and they actually, again, voted for that, voted for the referendum to break off from the United Kingdom, but the Scottish people decided to stay. Um, N Northern Ireland um, still remains under British rule. There is a, there is the Protestant Catholic divide. We'll get to that in a second. Catholics, um, the religion, most of the um, Catholics that you're going to find in the UK are going to be Irish. Um, your Scottish and your English are Protestant. Okay, um, it says primarily before 1998 happened in 1998 was the Good Friday Agreement, where Britain agreed to give Northern Ireland a regional government in which all the parties would be represented on a proportional basis. So we'll talk about what proportional basis representation means when we get to elections. But um, basically, it's an example of devolution or giving power over to the local government. Uh, more recently, you have social cleavages with ethnic minorities or immigrants. Only about 7.1% of the population is non-European origins. You do have a large population of Indians, and this is like India Indians, um, and Pakistanians, partly because that used to be um, an empire of the British, is Pakistan and India, they were one place, India, and it was, of course, a, a British part of the British Empire. Uh, you'll have a lot of Afro-Caribbean. Um, um, you have 
black populations, but minority ethnic populations did grow in the 10 years between 1991 and 2001. And immigrants from Eastern Europe, European countries has increased um, with the EU. And again, that's one of the reasons why they voted for the Brexit is because they didn't want to have to be forced to bring in immigrants from other places, specifically um, political refugees from Syria. Second most spoken language in the UK is Polish. I put that in there. There's a plate of pierogies. Um, I just think that's interesting. And my husband's Polish. So Poles made up a large number of the newcomers, um, especially uh, toward the end of the Cold War and the establishment of the EU. Sorry, just got a little distracted. Okay, the treatment of minorities, and we're talking about um, like your Muslims or the um, black population. Minorities have experienced some discrimination throughout the UK. Um, most of the ethnic minority population is younger than 16, and half of it is under the age of 25. So the ethnic minorities um, are very young. Okay, so they also are lacking a substan substantial amount of economic opportunities. So when you have a bunch of young kids who can't find jobs and can't find opportunity, um, they're going to cause problems. I mean, that's just that's how it is in the United States, too. So you're seeing um, a lot of the ethnic minorities um, are getting mistreated by police because of really racial bias or uh, racial profiling. Um, there's also physical harassment by citizens, um, marginalized, you know, they're discriminated against in ec education and job training and housing opportunities, and the government has imposed immigration restrictions, and that really started in the late 1970s with Margaret Thatcher, and it continued into the 2000s, and you'll see that probably continue throughout um, the upcoming decade with the Brexit. So they don't have to accept anybody else into the country if they don't want to. They'll be sovereign. You know, they'll have their own authority and sovereignty to make those immigration decisions on their own without having to follow the European Union's um, standards and regulations. Okay, um, but I don't want it to sound all negative and bad for minorities in England. There uh, have been some successes with minorities. It's not like, you know, they're completely downtrodden. Um, oops, sorry. I was about to say this is kind of self-explanatory. So among men of the minority groups, the proportional representation in the professional ranks is actually higher than that for white men, meaning um, that minority men are actually getting the higher are getting jobs are getting hired even though they are experiencing some discrimination but they compared to their percentage of the population overall they are represented in the workforce uh, class division is deeply embedded in UK culture and that really goes back to the whole duke and lord and being granted land from the crown. Um, you have social class distinctions that still exist today. Uh, you have your working class versus your middle class. And it's funny because even in London, or not in London, but even in the UK, people will distinguish people's class by their accent. So if you have a, cer if a certain way of talking or a certain accent, um, you could be called out for being like working class or middle class versus like the elite class. That's, if you think about it in the United States, we kind of have the same thing where people will joke on like country accents or redneck accents and they'll think that those people aren't quite as educated, even though that's not necessarily the truth. But same thing kind of happens in the UK. Um, education. Really, the most elite colleges would be Oxford and Cambridge. And if you were an elite, you had access to that kind of level of education. Um, then there's geographic and 
economic um, divides the south of England versus the north of England, Scotland, and Wales. So here you have south and then north. Um, the wealth and high-tech industries are in the south part. So there you got Cambridge, um, Hastings, Plymouth. All right, those are places that you might have heard of, and they have um, – a little bit better economic situation in the south in the north this is really more of your working class area um, so at Birmingham and um, Bir Birmingham and Liverpool are really classically like working class areas um, if you've ever watched uh, Peaky Blinders Peaky Blinders is about uh, um, England in in the interwar period between World War One and World War Two, and the Peaky Blinders are from Birmingham, and they are like working class folk, and they actually run a gang. But anyway, that's that they're working class like coal miner type folks, and then your southern people would be your more educated elites. Try. Let me see if there's anything else that you have to know. All right, no, that's it. All right, um, yeah, that's all. Okay, and if, um, nope, that's it. <laughs>